Sitting next to me today is the Prodigy, the King, and the flagship F-150 because this is the F-150 Limited, the top end trim of the F-150. Sure, you can get a Platinum, which is almost similar to this, but this has some features to it that just blow the Platinum out of the water. So today, I'm going to be walking through it and giving you a full review of it. So the exterior of this F-150 Limited is finished in anti-matter blue, a fairly new color for all Ford vehicles. You also see that you have limited printed in large font across the front of it, that way, everyone who walks by it knows you are driving the top end f-150 now a lot of things i've heard from people is that the f-150 limited doesn't sound like it'd be the top end trim it sounds like the platinum would be which is a little weird and at first when i heard that the limited was the top end one i was like ah, eh, you know limited doesn't necessarily sound like the top end but yes the limited is the top end so that answers everyone's questions you also have these led headlights with led turn signals and led daytime running lights up front and you know, as you see in the Ford badge, you have an integrated front camera. This is 360 degree cameras, 180 degree view cameras. Basically, if you're in this truck, you can see anywhere around you with how much technology they give you to prevent an accident. Doesn't matter that it has tow hooks. I doubt you'll ever be taking this into a situation where you'll need tow hooks, up front at least. These, you have these 22 inch rims that come on the Limited exclusively. Pretty cool looking, pretty luxurious looking. And then these power running boards down here, which don't seem to be folding up, but they are power. And then you, of course, have the power boost badge down there because this is a power boost F-150 Limited, and I'll get more into the engine specs of that later. There's that. You also have chrome door handles on the side. Now, something that bothers me, and this is a little minute detail, but when you're spending $81,000 on a truck, I feel like every little thing should be scrutinized, is this plastic button right here for the lock. Other Ford vehicles I've seen make it so you can just do this and it locks, or you do this and it locks, but why does it have to be plastic? It kind of takes away from the chrome seamless look of this truck. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's whatever. It's not that important. Why do you keep unfolding and folding? Anyways, moving on to the bed of the F-150 Limited, you have a large workspace back here with a ruler, just in case you need to measure anything. Of course, you have a step up here with a little handle as well just to make it easier getting into the back of this just in case you aren't so good at just jumping up on the bed another cool thing back here is you can actually turn your f-150 if you get the power boost into a generator it has one 7.2 kilowatt outlet and two 2.4 kilowatt outlets that you can use your f-150 as a generator plug anything into and power those devices back here you also have limited sprawled on this massive chrome panel just like on the f-150 platinum and you also have your trailer connections down here for electrical. Mostly that's about it. The F-150s don't really change that much between the higher end models. Yes, you have little slight changes, including the rims, more chrome accents, the names and the badging and everything like that. But mainly they all look the same about from the Lariat up, LED headlights and everything like that. So you're not really missing out on exterior styling when you go through the F-150 trim levels. It's really what you get, get on the interior and when it comes to upgrading the engines, this one has the power boost, like I said, so let's go over that. Now, opening the hood to the F-150 Limited, it has multiple engine options, one of them being the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, and one of them being the 3.5 liter Power Boost engine. Now, this is the 3.5 liter Power Boost V6. It makes 430 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. It is a mild hybrid V6. Honestly, though, if you're looking for gas mileage of an F-150, this is a great option. If you're still trying to have a truck that is capable of doing work, it can tow 12,700 pounds and has a payload of 2,120 pounds. But you do get decent amount of gas mileage on the way up here before we actually started going up hills. Got about 21 miles per gallon cruising around on city streets and going through highways. And that quickly went down because there's not a lot of miles on this truck. I really do like this engine. And when the engine's not under high load or you're just like cruising around a parking lot or anything like that, it uses the electric motor solely. Alrighty, moving on to the interior of the F-150 Limited. And I'll tell you, this thing is a different beast than other F-150s I've seen before. You can already see some notable changes from when I reviewed the Platinum F-150 or the Lariat F-150. Definitely see some upgrades to the interior of this one. So let's go ahead and start it up. Since this is the PowerBoost F-150, you don't get an engine sound when you start it up, which can be a little misleading because you'll start it and you won't hear it. And you'll be like, did I not start it properly? Put your foot on the brake and then it'll turn off. So yes, it is silent when it starts up because it is using the electric power from the electric motor. But a less about the power boost and more about the interior of this vehicle. Honestly, I never expect Fords to have diamond stitched leather seating 
And when I got in the F-150 Limited, I was like, wow, okay, wow. Now, as for like leather surfaces and everything like that, it's not that much different than if you were to go to a Platinum. You have most of your dash being leather on the top. Your seats are a nice soft leather. You have a leather center console, nice aluminum meshing around a lot of your trim pieces and your infotainment system. Nice soft armrests on the doors and on the upper door panel. Um, and now you got this fake plastic like carbon fiber looking material around it as well. At least it's better looking than cheap crappy plastic like you see on some lower end F-150s. Now some upgrades for this. This does have the max reclined seats which I will put up a b-roll clip of that. We have to speed that up because it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to fold those all the way down but you feel like a vampire in your little sarcophagus because you're laying so flat and you're just looking at the ceiling and the seats are so thin that you're just like you could sleep in here if you needed to, but I would still recommend a hotel bed. On top of that, as you can see, the seats are stitched in this diamond pattern, which is really nice. They are soft. Like I said, the leather is very soft. And you also have this upper back support right here that is adjustable. If you want to be sitting up a little farther, or if you don't, you just pull it all the way out and let it go back. I prefer it to be in its farthest back position. They are pretty comfortable, heated and cooled as well, and they are massaging forwards, gives you plenty of massaging features. You just click one of the buttons on the side that is in between the lumbar control. You have up lower rolling massage, upper rolling massage, you have circular cushion, full recovery, and relaxed recovery. So plenty of massage features, and that is also for the passenger seat along with the driver's seat. As for other materials in this vehicle, other than you know the leather all over the car, you do have a nice velvety Alcantara feeling headliner up here, which you actually, I don't think you get in any other Ford models. It's this nice Alcantara headliner, and even the sun visors are in that nice Alcantara feeling material as well. A lot of the interior is finished in this admiral blue color with this contrast white stitching and uh, inserts in the seats. I'm not a huge fan of the blue, especially on the steering wheel. I wish it was more like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of the color combination. I wish you got more options of choosing what you would get. Um, but the Admiral Blue does look definitely luxurious and more luxurious than just a plain flat color. It kind of gives me those like Rolls Royce or Bentley vibes or like Mercedes vibes, which no way I mean, I'm not comparing an F-150 to one of those vehicles, but it's the, the vibes you get from the seating is what it is. You also get a lot of limited badging in the vehicle as well on the back support cushion on the seats and in the center console, you get this massive limited plaque with your VIN and chassis number and the year that the car is super premium looking and it's completely unnecessary as well four cup holders up here wireless charging usb type c usb type a dual zone climate control like i said 360 degree cameras that have plenty of customization you can see, it tells you when the door is open and everything like that but as you can see you can go from 360 to front to 180 and then you can see what's going on in the back with your uh, bed let's switch it back to 360 like I said, this button is to control your generator, your pro onboard, whether you have the 7.2 or the 2.4 kilowatt outlets. And you also have your parking sensors. Uh, home link. Now, you, for the infotainment system and the gauge cluster, the gauge cluster is a 12-inch screen. Plenty of customization, plenty of features within the gauge cluster. You don't get to see your navigation, though, which is one of the things that the German brands do so right that other brands just don't do. You can see the navigation in the screen, and the F-150 does not offer that. But other than that, the gauges are very clear and concise. All your information is displayed to you better than I think an analog gauge cluster would be. You have your gas mileage trip settings. This has off-road information in it. Not that you're ever going to take an F-150 Limited off-roading, but just in case you get into some rocky terrain and you want to see that you're at a one degree pitch or one degree roll, then I, I guess you could turn on your off-road settings. You can also see your towing function, which this F-150 has the ability to kind of scale how much you're towing and is able to know how much you're towing and how close you are to its maximum tow rating. You get a 12 inch center screen running SYNC 4A, which has plenty of features in it as well. I've gone over in my other videos information about this gauge cluster, but it is pretty responsive as you see the navigation screen right here and you can zoom out pretty easily. I would still recommend if you have the ability to use Apple Maps, it has a better navigation system. Not only is the map responsive in Apple Maps, but the navigation system in Apple Maps is very helpful. But if you don't, this navigation system should suit you fine. Sync 4A also has multitasking, so I can just swipe over and bring my radio up, or I can swipe over and bring my navigation up, and whatever you choose, that is your, that is your multitasking settings. 
As for features in your F-150, you can control your driver assistance, your pro onboard generator, like I said, towing, zone lighting, which is cool because it uses zones in the, in the vehicle in the F-150, like the zones on the mirrors up front and on the back of the vehicle, so you can light up certain parts of the road if you want. You don't have to turn on all your lights, which can be helpful at night and in tight areas. And also control your power running boards, which we should turn off approach detection because it kept going on and on. Welcome lighting. Oh, no, we can't turn that off because we need welcome lighting. Sorry. But this also has, believe it or not, and I don't see this in a lot of F, a lot of Ford vehicles, on top of having Apple CarPlay, you get Android Auto. So all your Samsung and Google users out there will be able to use Android Auto in your F-150, thankfully. As for audio, this has an 18-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds incredible. Very good. 18 speakers is a little overkill for a truck with a cabin that's not like the size of an SUV but 18 speakers hey man if you're if you're an audiophile then definitely definitely a decent truck for you some other cool things in here of course you have your power raising and lowering gear selector up here that has been in the F150s for the 2021 model year that will continue to be in the F150s for probably the next 5 to 6 years a pretty decently sized center console that has plenty of storage space in here and you have your pro power onboard cables you also have a glove box up here with a mask in it and then you have a glove box right here now i feel like they kind of sacrifice glove box space down here to make the glove box up here kind of a thing but this is kind of staple f-150 so it makes sense that they wouldn't get rid of that as for drive modes almost forgot to go over those let's go over your drive modes you have sport eco tow and haul normal slippery snow and sand and then you also have mud ruts i really wouldn't be taking my f-150 limited into a mud and rut situation. I don't think many people are going. That's basically it for the front seats up here, guys. Beautiful interior. Let's move on to the back and go over some of the features back there. All right, I'm going to have to step onto the plastic that covers these floor mats, but that's all right. Plenty of room back here, absolutely. Uh, 12 inches of leg room, a good 12 inches of leg room at least. A uh, decent headroom. I probably have about, I don't know, an inch before my head hits the ceiling, maybe a two. Uh, seats are actually, I would say, more comfortable back here than they are up front. Oh, that's insane. They are more comfortable. Now, something I like about Fords as well, you can't do it with these back ones, but you can adjust the headrests. I don't see that in many other vehicles. A decent amount of back of the seat pocket space, heated seats in the back, and you get a 12 volt socket, USB type C and USB type A, and then a 120 volt outlet down here. And you have more speakers back here, leather on the door trim as well. Like, a lot of times people don't focus on what's going on in the back of the vehicle and so they do plastic for the doors and everything like that but it's nice that they actually put leather back here i absolutely love that and then more leather for the armrest as for center storage space you get none but you do get a nice armrest with two cup holders back here which gives this accessible cup holders without using the doors six cup holders to use but yeah i love the seats back here you to get two climate vents so your passengers won't be complaining Oh, I could act absolutely ride in the back of this for a couple hours. All righty, so driving the F-150 Limited with the 3.5 liter power boost engine. I gotta say, I'm actually very impressed. I don't know what Ford did to this. I know it's got active power steering, so you're at lower speeds, the steering's lighter, and higher speeds, the steering's tighter. But the suspension isn't any different. It's still independent suspension up front with leaf springs in the back, but I've never noticed how well an F-150 rides. It just is... Something's different about this one, and I can't put my finger on it, because when I looked at the suspension characteristics of this vehicle, they were the same. It wasn't like they changed much. Now, around turns, I have noticed that weight transfer from side to side can get a little bit high when uh, making slight turns and corrections, because it'll just instantly go like this and wash back and forth, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you're looking for like a super premium ride, it could be a little better but most for the most part it's absolutely great like it's uh nine tenths of the way there uh it's super insulated cabin i can't i was driving up here and i can't hear road noise the insulation in the limited is absolutely just incredible for an f-150 it's not something you would normally like expect out of this vehicle now, though this is a mild hybrid system, the mild hybrid system does not mean this truck is not powerful. It can use that 570 pound-feet of torque and that 430 horsepower 
very well. So if you put this thing in eco mode, you're definitely getting great gas mileage. But the second you put it back into normal or sport mode, you're getting power out of it. It's it's fast. And of course, that 10-speed automatic transmission that this thing has is pretty snappy. At low speeds, it can be a tiny bit jerky, and you can feel a little bit of the shifts. But at, when you're like putting your foot into it, it's very snappy. The 10-speed has been always been a great automatic transmission for these Fords, um, and that's why they use it in the Explorers, the F-150s, the Mustangs, because they are good transmissions. I got in this expecting it to ride like a normal F-150. I knew the materials were different, but getting in it, I expected the ride to not be any better. But I believe, and I might just be a placebo, and it might just all be in my head, but I think the F, this F-150 Limited rides better than even the Platinum F-150 does. It's just, you're like cocooned because you can't hear anything on the outside of it. And that's such a nice thing to have, especially when you're spending this much money on a vehicle. It just adds to that extra comfort level. I will say the backs of the seats are a little stiff for me. I wish they were a little softer. Like I said, the back seats in this vehicle are definitely a lot softer and cushier than the front seats in this vehicle. But it's nothing that you couldn't spend eight hours here driving on a road trip. I mean, I've been in it driving for probably an hour, hour and a half today so far, and it's um, it's been very nice. Let's put your foot down a little bit. It downshifts pretty quickly, but like I said, you can feel those downshifts. You put it in, over into sport mode, definitely livens up. It switches it into four-wheel automatic, and then Oh, it hauls and kicks in that 3.5. It is powerful. For a mild hybrid system, this thing is powerful. So you have adaptive cruise control and lane centering and assistive steering, which basically means if your hands are on the steering wheel, the truck can drive itself. So if we turn on cruise control, lock it in, and turn on lane centering. So the lane keeping system's on right now. My hands are on the steering wheel, and it's going to turn me around this corner. I'm putting no force into the steering right now. I'm putting absolutely no force into the steering right now, and it's doing all of this by itself. Adaptive cruise control, it has multiple stages where it won't uh, get a certain distance from a car. Let's see if it can pull through this corner right here easily or not. Okay, I don't trust that. Now Ford's rolling out something called Blue Cruise, which uses a system to track your eyes instead of using your hands to track if you're paying attention. It tracks your eyes, so as long as you're looking forward, you can put your hands in your lap, do nothing. Um, it even tracks your eyes if you're wearing sunglasses, so there's no issues with that. A lot. If you get a or you get or you own a Ford Mach E, um, if you look down at the steering wheel, you will see that black bar that sits on the top of the steering wheel. That black bar is going to be the sensor that runs and reads your eyes. Um, they just need to develop, um, finish developing the software for it, and it will be active. It's going to just be a software update for those vehicles, and I'm sure the 2022 F-150s will have something along the lines of that black bar, or it could already be integrated, and they already made it so you aren't able to see it, and it's just more seamlessly integrated. But I don't see any like uh, sensors around the steering wheel, so who knows? I'm not going to make any comments on its competitors because I haven't driven any of its competitors. I'm not going to compare this to like a $50,000 Ram or Silverado. So, but for this truck alone, without getting in anything else, I do really like it. And uh, yeah, the limited trim, if you're looking for that extra bit of luxury on top of the Platinum, that extra bit of comfort, it might be a decent way to upgrade. Um, I just do want you to know that the Raptor now after destination fees cost $65,840 if you're looking at a Raptor and basically has the functionality of a Platinum in it. So if you're looking for something more off-road oriented and less comfort and luxury oriented, the Raptor is $65,840 versus this I believe starts in the mid-70 range. So yeah. Um, this is definitely the F-150 you're looking for if you're looking for luxury, and then the Raptor sits below that being the F-150 you're looking for if you're looking for hardcore off-roading and um, maybe some wheeling. But I wouldn't take this one off-road, especially for its price and what its use case is for. This is definitely for some rancher up in Montana who has like a 100,000 acres and is pulling 10 to $20 million a year in income. <laughs> that's what this truck is for because we all know how much they like their f-150s up there
So that is the F-150 Limited top, top, top end trim level for the F-150. Comment down below what you guys think of the price of it and what you think of this vehicle. And if you really like it, definitely drop a like on the video. And if you want to see more from us, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.